What's up guys? After one year delay and five years of waiting, the biggest sporting event in the world is finally back. Olympic Games return and this time they have a special meaning for judo. After more than 56 years, Olympic judo is coming back to the country, city and arena where it was first introduced into Olympic schedule. Yes, Olympic Games are back in Japan and Olympic judo is back in Tokyo Budokan Nippon Arena. In the land of the rising sun, we will see 8 days full of blood, sweat, tears and glory. 8 days of epic judo served by world ranking leaders, top talents, experienced veterans and legends in the making. Every competition has its narrative and Olympic Games are no exception. So without further ado, let's have a glimpse at 8 stories to look after in this year's Olympics. Welcome to Countdown, Tokyo 2021. To start the countdown, I'd like to highlight one big problem with judo in the Olympics. The athlete quota and wild cards. Due to limited number of spots in the tournament, countries can only pick one athlete per weight category. While many top level athletes have to stay at home, nearly a dozen of wild card spots get occupied by judokas from all sorts of exotic non-judo countries. The places that could be taken by top ranked judokas are instead occupied by athletes that sometimes don't even get into world's top 100. This situation doesn't happen with other sports. Jamaica can pick multiple sprinters for 100 meter dash. Kenya can field several runners for marathon and the list goes on. But for some reason Japan, Russia or other country cannot select multiple qualified judokas for judo contest. Let's face it, this limitation hurts credibility of sport and takes away Olympic dreams from many top level judokas. In my opinion, this needs to change. International Olympic Committee needs to stop giving charity spots for athletes who don't deserve them and give them to top level judokas who work very hard for that position in world rankings. Just look at few of the names that will not compete in this year's Olympics. Joshiro Maruyama, double world champion, world ranking number two and one of the best pound for pound judokas in the world. Inal Tasoe, 2021 European champion, and one of the most technical judokas in heavyweight division. Ai Shishime, double world champion and world ranking number one. Kokoro Kageura, current world champion and the first man in a decade to defeat Teddy Rinner. Krista Daguchi, 2019 world champion, one of the leaders in her category for almost four years. All these athletes and many more will have to watch Olympics from their home and this is not fair. Things need to change and that's all I can say to IOC. You just gotta get it together. Get your shit together. The following story in our countdown revolves around the youngest ever world judo champion Daria Bilodit from Ukraine. Since bursting onto the stage of senior judo, Bilodit looked nearly unstoppable. For a long time, no one had an answer to her size and deadly ground game. At one point she even had an undefeated streak of 38 matches. A year or two ago it looked like getting Olympic gold will be an easy task. But then pandemic happened and their form suffered a dip. She suffered few losses and her judo stopped working to the same extent as it used to. And now she's at crossroads. A year ago she was the biggest favorite for gold. But now with less than 10 days from Olympics her path to the gold looks treacherous and steep. The category is as stacked as it gets. Just to name a few names, we have a world ranking number one, Disria Krasniki, former world champion from Japan, Funa Tonaki, defending Olympic champion Paola Pareto, a talented French girl, Shireen Bokli, and a solid group of high level veterans with Mongolia's Munkbat in the lead. If Bilodid wants to win, she will have to pull off a special performance. And that's what Olympics are all about special people producing special moments. Will she produce it? We'll see on day one of the tournament. With our next story, we stay in day one of the tournament. In the lightest male weight category, Naohisa Takato from Japan will have a chance to become one of the best extra lightweights of all time. He won pretty much every tournament he competed in and he already has the record in this category with three world championship gold medals. 
The only gold medal that is missing in his collection is Olympic gold. In lower weight classes, staying consistent is not easy, and leaders change quite often. Nonetheless, Takato stayed the leading force and the most consistent judoka in this category for almost a decade. But with good results comes big pressure. At 28, Takato is approaching that age where physical decline starts to set in, so Tokyo Olympics might be his last chance at Olympic gold. Japanese fans love him and always expect him to win, so anything less than gold in Tokyo will be a disappointment. To win, he will have to cope with tremendous amount of pressure and dangerous and dynamic opponents such as Yeldo Smetov, Lohumi Khumiani, Bon Jin Kim and many others. In this category, one mistake can cost everything. If he manages to win gold, he will achieve a monumental task and will become a living legend in under 60 kg weight category. So that is just another good reason why day one of Olympics is so special and should not be missed. Speaking about legends, another living legend will compete in women's under 63 kg weight category. Clarisse Begnanou from France is one of the most dominant female judokas of the last decade. She is 5-time world champion and runner-up in 2016 Olympics. Five years ago in Rio, she came close to gold but had to settle with silver. Since losing an Olympic final, she improved massively and now rules her category with iron grip. In Tokyo, she will try to rewrite the history and finally take what rightfully belongs to her. This time she comes to Olympics with nothing but gold in her mind. On paper, there are only two opponents who can give her some sort of resistance. First one is reigning Olympic champion Tina Tursteniak from Slovenia and the second is two-time world silver medalist, local judoka Miku Tashiro. At the moment, Akbegnanu seems untouchable, but Olympic Games have a tendency to produce huge upsets and sensations, so that's why under 63 kg weight category cannot be missed, because either way you'll get to see something special. You can witness the coronation of a legend or an upset of a decade. Both options sound exciting, so don't skip the date 4 of the tournament. In our next story, we have three male divisions of hell. Under 81, 90 and 100 kg weight categories are currently the most competitive divisions in all of judo. Neither of those three categories have a clear front runner, but they all have 10 or 15 strong contenders who can compete for medals. There are many stories and questions revolving around these categories. For example, who will win in under 81 kg weight division? Will it be the current world champion Matthias Kass? Home crowd favorite Takanori Nagase. Georgian beast Tato Grigalashvili. Maybe it will be someone with the experience of Sagi Muki. Or maybe there will be some other strong judoka that peaks at the right time. In under 90 and under 100 kg weight categories, the situation is a little bit more transparent. The two men of the hour are Nicolas Sherazadeshvili from Spain and Jorge Fonseca from Portugal. They both tore down the competition a month ago in World Championships. But achieving peak condition in such short amount of time is not easy. So the question is obvious, can they repeat that form in the Olympic Games? Or maybe someone like Noel Van Tien, who skipped the Worlds, will take their place. We should not forget home crowd choice, Aaron Wolf. Maybe athletes from Russia, Georgia or South Korea will have one of those Olympic Games where everything falls into right places and medals fall left and right. Maybe the legend Ilya Siliadis inspires his Uzbek team and they run rampant in their respective weight categories. These and many other conundrums can only be answered if you watch days 4, 5 and 6. One thing is clear, it will be 3 hellish days for athletes and 3 exciting days for viewers. All Olympic Games have their special moments, but in Tokyo we might witness something that's never happened before. Hifumi Abe and his sister Uta will have a chance to become the first siblings to win Olympic gold in the same day of competition. Both Hifumi and Uta are double world champions and both are consistently ranked among the most dominant judokas in the world. If they manage to keep that level of dominance in Tokyo, they will become one of the most legendary families in Judo. 
If you ask me, they have all the right tools necessary to achieve that goal. Ridiculous power. Diverse range of skills, tactical intelligence and confidence. So the ball is in their hands, but making history won't be as easy as it sounds. At the moment Uta Abe is on a league of her own, but she has two main adversaries that can cause her some trouble. First one will be her biggest rival, current European champion Amandine Bouchard from France. And the second will be the former queen of this category, reigning Olympic champion from Kosovo, Mylinda Kelmendi. On the other side of Arena, Hifumi will have to go through some very tough stylistical matchups, and world silver medalist Manuel Lombardo and Olympic silver medalist Baul An. These two opponents pose the biggest threat to his aspirations, so the path to the gold will not be as easy as it looks. All that said, the harder you have to work, the sweeter the reward. So July 25th, day 2 of the tournament, mark this day in your calendar. It's a day in Olympics that you could not miss. Speaking about things you can't miss, Shohei Ono is one judoka whose matches you cannot miss. I know these days it's popular to overinflate athletes achievements or blow performances out of proportion and I admit I'm guilty of that as much as anyone. But if there's one judoka that deserves all the hype, it has to be Ono. He is 3 time world champion and a reigning olympic champion. He has been the most dominant force in male lightweight division for over a decade. Ono is one of the most feared competitors in IGF World Tour. The last time he lost in international competition was in winter of 2014. What makes him so feared is not only his accomplishments, but also his judo. On the mat, Shohei Ono is like a machine, emotionless and calculated, with no wasted movements. He has brilliant tactical and technical skills that are enhanced by his elite athleticism. With his no-nonsense style of judo, Ono can produce both impenetrable defense and unstoppable offense. He likes to keep his judo basic, but very efficient. With his style, he can pick apart his opponents like no one else. He is one of the biggest favorites in the whole tournament, and if he wins his second Olympic gold, he will undoubtedly become one of the best pound-for-pound -pound judokas of all time. The only thing to consider is that Ono hasn't competed since February of 2020, so he lost some places in world rankings. The lack of activity and low place in rankings might even out the odds a little bit but it's still hard to pick any real opposition that can challenge him. In my opinion, his closest opposition comes in the name of 2018 world champion Chang Rim An from South Korea. There is also Georgian legend Lasha Shardatuashvili, Nevaza master Tommy Masias, always dangerous Rustam Oruzhov, and the king of the underdogs Fabio Basile. All that said, with all due respect to all of the competitors in this category, Shohei Ono operates on a different level, so he should not have any problems in getting his second gold. We'll see if I'm wrong on day 3 of Olympics, so stay tuned. The last story in today's video revolves around another phenom, the best heavyweight judoka of all time and the most accomplished judo competitor in the history, Teddy Rinner. His accomplishments are unrivaled. He is 10-time world champion and 2-time Olympic champion. In Tokyo, he will go for his third Olympic gold, which would tie the record that belongs to Tadahiro Nomura. Rinner is probably the most physically gifted judoka of all time. With height of 2 meters 4 centimeters and weight of around 140 kilograms, he can ragdoll almost any opponent. But it's not all about strength. Beneath all of those muscles, there is a brilliant tactician with high level judo IQ. And that is why he managed to dominate the heavyweight division since 2007. He held the longest undefeated streak of 154 matches and no one could defeat him for over a decade. There was a point when seeing him lose seemed impossible. But in 2020, his streak finally ended and his aura of invincibility took a hit. At the age of 32, he finally became someone who can be beaten. And in Tokyo, there will be plenty of tough opponents who will be glad to spoil his Olympic party. Among the top contenders, there will be world silver medalist Tamerlan Bashaev from Russia, 
former world champion from Georgia Guran Tushishvili, an Olympic champion in under 100 kg weight category Lukas Kripalik from Czech Republic. There are also a few dark horses such as Hang Grohl, Yakiv Hamel and Minjong Kim. Home crowd will be cheering for Olympic silver medalist Hisayoshi Harasawa. All in all, Rinner is no longer this unstoppable force, but he is still a strong favorite, so the last day of individual competition will be very interesting. Will Rinner end his Olympic career on top or someone new will take his throne? The only way to know the answer is to keep your eyes glued to the screen on 30th of July, the last day of individual competition. That's it for today's countdown. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I made you more excited about the Olympics. That was a lot of work from my part so do your part of the deal. Press like, share, subscribe and click that notification bell. Stay active, stay healthy and have a nice day.